So we've got another Renko trading top tip for you here. And it's all around one of the peculiarities you will see in the Renko charts. And it can impact your you know, buying and selling decision making process strategy design. And it's an issue that, you know, newcomers will get a bit confused about. So I thought, let's get into the nitty gritty of this. And it's all around temporary block sizes and how they work in the charts and how you can get different perspectives, different potential entry points or exit points to your trade using different time frames in the Renko chart. So what is the right methodology to deploy in the Renko charts? They don't teach you this sort of thing in the books. It comes from a lot of trial and error and experience using these chart types. So I think it's probably easier if we looked an example right now to sort of illustrate what the issue is. So here's what I'm talking about. We're looking at Bitcoin at the moment. I've used quite an aggressive $150 block size for plenty of action. Now the chart here is set to one hour. Now you can notice the normal red and green blocks there, but have a look on the right hand side there, those blue blocks that you can see there. Now they are known as temporary Renko blocks. Why are they temporary Renko blocks? Well, remember we set this chart to one hour and $150 per block size. So we can see one, two, three, four, five uh, new blocks and five times 150, that's 750 points. It's moved with inside that hour time frame, but the hour hasn't finished yet. So they're not set in stone yet. Those blocks haven't been concreted in until that hour has finished. So what does that mean? Well, that means that those blocks could disappear if the price reverses within that period, or they could expand and move on forwards and create new blocks. That's the thing with the Renko chart. It's peculiarity is this temporary block thing. Now that creates a problem if you're trying to buy or sell, make decisions around buying and selling. Do you take the temporary blocks as your way in? Do you wait till the hour has finished? You know, that could mean missing out on a trade. You know, it can impact your trading psychology. What is the rule base? How can you get around this problem? There's many ways of doing it um, and you know, coming up with a more consistent objective approach to using the Renko charts. And that's what we're going to dig into in this video. And just to really illustrate the issue, I've put the Bitcoin one hour chart with a five minute chart on the right hand side. So you can see how the um, blocks colored differently. You can see on the right, because they're on the five minute chart, they concreted themselves in as permanent. And you can see on the left, they are still temporary. So I'm hoping you're starting to guess and think that this could be one of the solutions for getting around this issue with the Renko chart. So is dropping the time frame to a lower factor the answer to this problem? Well, yes and no. If you do take it down to say one minute, five minute, remember you're going to have a lot more blocks and that can throw up you know, many false signals. So there's a bit of a conundrum here. What do we actually do? What do we actually take? And it's very similar if you looked at just a standard normal chart. It's the same sort of uh, thinking process where we've got a candlestick chart, as you can see here. And the question in your strategy design or you know actual trading is, do I wait for the bar to close before I action or do I take it on you know the current live price? It's the same as do you wait for you know the breakout to happen um, as it goes through the line, you know the trend line to start with, or do you wait and see? What happens next? And it's the same sort of thinking, I suppose, in Renko. It's uh, are you aggressive and go in on the temporary blocks? Uh, do you manipulate the time frames to 
uh, get you in and you'll feel more confident by lowering the time frame but like I said that creates issues so I'm just going to show you a way that I go about you know this whole uh, peculiarity with the Renko chart so we've got another example here it's GBP US dollar on the left we've got a daily Renko chart on the right we've got five minute chart and block size very small here 0.03 now as you can see as we saw in the Bitcoin chart those temporary blocks are shooting on up now another issue you might find if you're using trading packages like TradingView is you notice that the signal there is lagging and it's missing out all of that part so if you're building an automated system that might be a problem if you're using say a higher time frame and is why you'd probably move to the right hand side chart where you see there is no lag whatsoever and the signals are actually you know pretty much in real time because the blocks are closing off and cementing faster um, that helps you there but like you see you get a lot of smaller blocks in there that create you know whipsaws false signals so this is the conundrum and how I go about solving this is I might take the signals the action on the lower time frame but then I will go back over to the longer term chart and see what the blocks are telling me and even if these are temporary I might take them as you know positive you know bullish signal so if I get a bullish signal in the shorter time frame it's bullish over in the longer one then I'm going to get into that trade so that's one type of solution and another example here CAD JPY we can see those um, temporary blocks all forming to the downside as the CAD gets weep weaker against the Japanese and even on the five minute chart over here we've got some new temporary blocks creating which should change off you know cement themselves in once they've created within that five minute window we've got the daily on the left the five minute on the right hand side so here I really want to highlight a sort of a block creation issue that many might overlook now if you right click on to the chart here and go to settings the source of the data now I've got here on the left hand side open high low and close and on the right hand side it's just the close now what does that mean does it make any difference well yes it does now using the open high low and close you're going to get a lot more blocks a lot more detail and information in the analysis the close will just going to give you a much smoother you know um, looking chart almost like a, a line chart to some extent so when I'm putting together the um, well trying to solve the you know the peculiarity of the block size whether to get in or out I do take into consideration the open high low close so on this example I've got it here on the daily data so I can start to see the range of the price movement and I'm more comfortable with that capturing most of the price action now on the left here I've just got the standard so on the right here I've got the standard close now I'm using that as my entry in or out so say the stochastic cross is just an example we've got a red block there just there I would go across to that same time period um, in the longer time frame and see what color the block is over there now this might make you miss trades but in the longer term it can um, be a good sort of trend confirmation type tool to support the faster action prices now in this example we had the cross here in the stochastics now and if we go over to there it's actually a black block so I'd probably ignored that signal even though we see that nice price action there moving down I'm afraid you've got to uh, forget it and move on so it's creating a balance between the different time frames as well that doesn't exclude all the trades you want to do and gives you that balance so back testing and you know coming up with a proper plan is really important when you do this sort of you know trading on the Renko charts 
So what if you are only using just the one chart? Well, we've got the FTSE 100 here, uh, 15 block size on the three hour chart. Again, you can see these temporary blocks creating themselves here from a bullish uprun to the recent highs. Now, again, we've got the problem of the lagging indicator here and we're missing out on that signal maybe actioning itself. But if you do have the ability and the time to be able to sit there watching the charts, then you know take them as you know the rule um, in your strategy. Maybe that you know if you see the temporary one moving to the upside, uh, like we see here, then you're just going to go into the trade. You know, and if you put a history of trades together, and that strategy works for you, you know then then so be it. it is no right or wrong answer here it's just different methodologies of getting around this like say peculiarity of the Renko block um, sort of creation in this window of the time frame that you set all I can say is though whatever you choose whatever methodology you choose to use you've got to be consistent you've got to give the strategy idea the mental model you're deploying here on whatever market a chance to work so you can analyze the results and see if that idea works or not and if it doesn't work what can you do differently if it works then you know you know with confidence that you can continue trading in that style so to summarize then going back to our um, Bitcoin example you actually see now on the left how those um, blocks have turned positive they've cemented themselves in and we can see a new little pullback one creating itself at the moment so the summary um, to get round this uh, temporary block issue firstly you've got the choice of assuming that that's the direction you know the market is going to be heading so for example this reverse you see a full block completed or a second block in your rule set you're just going to enter the trade anyway you're not going to wait for the signal but that messes us around a bit with say we wanted the um, automated more trading approach to the Renko world and as you can see we've got that lagging part with the indicator that we might miss out on so that gives us our next option of lowering the time frame and like in this example we went down to five minutes which gives us more blocks in shorter time spaces but remember the weakness is that it's going to get you possibly into trades and out trades you didn't want to so we need a filter to that system so we keep the five minute and the one hour here on the Bitcoin example together and any signals that are generated in the shorter term we confirm with say the corresponding block in that period so we can see all through when we got our buy signal here on the stochastic down here the block started to move on up nicely what was it doing on the other side well actually the block was green so I was going to take that trade as you know a nice buying opportunity and that's pretty much how you can get around it you're sort of building a time frame curve in essence of um, like a five minute one hour window you could build it even further if you wanted to adding in higher time frames to help you out but this I think gives you a simple way of um, getting around this peculiarity and not missing out on the trade signals that come along and giving you the psychological confidence that now is the right time to get in or out of a trade now you know if you found that interesting and you want to learn more about Renko you know in its entirety then I'm going to give you um, some suggestions right now where you can start so where can you find all you need to know about Renko charts? Well, it's right under your nose. All you have to do is stay on my YouTube channel. It is all there. Now, I've created a lot of different playlists around the world of trading, but one of them is called Learn Technical Analysis. Now, if you click on the view um, 
playlist and you'll scroll down you find all the different types of technical analysis charts you want to learn from and lo and behold down there we've got one called learn Renko charts for trading so once you click into the video course what are you going to learn well there's about two and a half hours of free content six sections 45 lectures all delivered by me and i've been using these charts for over two decades in a professional capacity and you'll see the content all laid out for you where we go through absolutely everything from how they came to be to how you can use them with that western approach that i talked about how they can help you trade in psychology how you build and construct these types of charts and that's a critical process to the success of them how you can use other indicators how you can build strategies how you can get in and out of the trade use all these other tools and create your own trading system all around it so there you go that's my course learn and master how to trade renko charts get the trading edge completely free on youtube get stuck in enjoy renko it is a fabulous chart type and now here is the link to that very video Thank mm -hmm. you.